And hello again, everyone, and welcome into this week's edition of the Jacket Corner. A uh, big week for Oxford football this week. The Yellow Jackets return to region play as they hit the road to take on a very good Benjamin Russell team. And it was a happy homecoming last Friday night as Oxford knocked off Vestavia Hills by a final score of 35-14. to Joined now by head coach Ryan Herring. And coach, let's start with last week and homecoming. Uh, uh, it was a great week at Oxford. A lot of festivities surrounding homecoming. A lot of people coming back. Uh, to Oxford last Friday night and football team got it done on the field against 7A Vestavia. Big win for your team last week. Oh, it was a great win and uh, like I've said over and over, all the credit goes to the kids. They did an excellent job in preparation, excellent job in playing and then I thought they showed a lot of class after the game, you know, like they always do. I just can't say enough about the players last week because that, you know, they needed that. Uh, they deserve that and you like to see people get what they deserve, and, and they worked hard, and, and the final product was a win against Vestavia, which is a, you know, a big power in the state of Alabama. And it was on homecoming where you can have a lot of distractions, and, and you got all kind of stuff going on, but I thought they handled it great. Was that, was that the best game that you put together so far? Oh, there's no doubt. No doubt. Offensively, defensively, special teams, it was our best performance. And, you know, it was, I know we talked about this on last week's show, and I know a lot of high school football fans probably were aware of this, but you had a legend on the other sideline there in Buddy Anderson, who now is the all-time winningest coach in the state. Uh, everyone who follows high school football knows the type of teams that he fields. They know the way he does his job. And uh, it, that's another big part in winning this game is being able to beat a team such as his. Well, that, that's one thing, you know, one day some of these boys are going to look back and realize that they, they, they beat a great team. They beat a, a, a great coach. And, uh, you know, the, the thing is, me or Buddy, we didn't go out there and play. But our boys beat Vestavia's boys. Mm -hmm. And that's something they're going to remember. You know, it was a homecoming. These seniors, it's going to be special to them. Whether they know it now or not, it, that was a special win. And the mental aspect of the game obviously is so important. This is the type of win that gives you confidence, and I don't know if it could come at a better time when you're about to really get back into the meat of your region schedule. We needed it. You know, we had been close in a couple of games and came out on bottom. Uh, it, it was just huge for a lot of reasons. Win winning just takes care of a lot of things anyway. Uh, you have less problems from A to Z when you, when you win. Uh, but it was just, it was at a, at a much needed time. Uh, now we jumped back in the region play, got Ben Russell, so we've got some momentum going. So, you know, it was, it was very important. All right, we'll take a break, come back with highlights from last Friday night's game. Stay with us here in the Jacket Corner. Well, you know, you would be hard-pressed to find a more impressive win last week in the state of Alabama than Oxford's 35-14 victory over Vestavia Hills, which, Coach, makes you the logical choice for our KFC Jackson Mortgage Company Team of the Week Award this week for TV24 and the Pigskin Roundup. We thought we'd let everyone know that in case they happen to miss that on that announcement on last Friday's show, but that means your players get a team meal from KFC this week. You get a T-shirt for every player, so... Uh, I, I know your kids love that. Well, it feels good to be recognized. And uh, like I said earlier, you know, we've had some close losses. And, uh, you know, it just, you beat Vestavia. You know, everybody knows it was a big win. But then to get recognized as Team of the Week, it just adds a little icing on the cake. So we look forward to getting that chicken on Thursday. Well, it was really a dominating performance for the Jackets. Let's uh, head out to Lamar Field and check out the festivities from last Friday night. We'll start with talking about homecoming. As we mentioned uh, on last week's show, you deal with all the potential distractions. You have all the festivities and activities going on during the week. You have the uh, homecoming parade on Thursday night, which there was a great turnout for that in downtown Oxford. And here you see footage of the pregame festivities with uh, Carly Waits, who is your 2014 homecoming queen for Oxford High School. Congratulations to her and her court as well. Here come the Jackets onto the field taking on Vestavia. And again, Coach, uh, you got off to a good start in this game, and that, I know that was important for you to see on homecoming. Well, Vestavia is a downhill running team, and we knew we had to get downhill and match them inside the box on all those runs. They run inside counters and, and a quick toss, so we had to play well on defense. And we started out good. Then we get a good punt return right here, so we've got Got some momentum from a three and out, then we'll get a good punt return. So offense comes out, and, and we move, we come out there and move the ball. There's a good catch by Stovall, good throw by Ty. Uh, and we move it, move it, and then we get right down here, and you know, we just 
end up missing. We get behind the sticks, turn it over. Anyway, back on defense, uh, get good pressure right there. You know, we, we didn't have a, a stun on, but we just got good pressure. Good job by the D line right there. Anyway, they end up having to punt it back to us. They got uh, Gamble double covered right there, and he makes a great catch, and it was a great throw. And uh, you know, of course, he had a he had a career night. There we are, hand it to him, and, and he, you know, if there's a if there's a way to get in the end zone when he's close, he's gonna get in the end zone. He's about the best I've ever seen at, at just finding a crease and getting in the end zone. They bust one out on us right here. Uh, we just had a misfit with a linebacker, uh, but anyway, Jacob Sears makes a good tackle. Got a horse call there. Right here, we, 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 we hit him, we don't lock up, and the safety runs across the field, so we, we have a void there. And it was, it was a good run by number 15. He did a great job. He had another good run uh, during the game. He was a tough runner. Uh, we get it back on offense, and we've got to go punt it. Uh, big play right here. You know, Vest Davey didn't make many mistakes, and they fumbled that punt. And uh, Q Ford got on it, real proud of him. Uh, here we are, we got a little quick screen to Cookie. Uh, and there goes Cookie doing a great job. He fights for extra yards. He fights, fights, fights. The next thing you know, they rip it away from him. You know, you want kids to give second effort, but you also want to protect that football. And uh, but I, I think we don't. I don't think you'll see that happen again with Cookie. There's a uh, play right there by KJ Adams. Great job on third down. It was a great tackle. Here we are, a little quarterback draw. Ty does a good job of getting some yards in there, and we got to make sure we keep that ball high and tight. Here we are with a little sweep to gamble. Both the guards get out there great. Boy, he just reads the blocks. Gets about 15 yards. Line, line did a great job, especially on some of the sweeps right there. There's another buck sweeping. Gamble sees a crease on the backside and hits it. Just another great job, good vision. Right there, he just kind of plows over one guy, gets the end zone. So right now it's 14-7 and everything's going great. They come out here, right here. This is a third down play. And dadgum Jacob Sears. We've been begging him all year to make a tackle, and he <laughs> makes a great one at a pivotal time. Here we are, run quarterback counter again. There goes Ty, get some good yards. Got to be smart not to block behind the ball right there. Uh, another great job, throw and catch. We're trying to get it down here real quick before half, and we kind of get stalled out, so we got to punt it. Uh, but they don't have quite enough time to do anything with it. But I thought Ty punted real good Friday night. A lot of people don't talk about that, but uh, he's doing a great job punting for us. Now there you see the halftime score. You're up 14-7. Really could have been worse. You had the turnover there as you were uh, in position to score again. But still a very good first half overall. And you mentioned the game that Trey Gamble had, and we'll, that'll be recognized in your player awards that we'll look at later in the show. But uh, talk about the, the fact that he plays – different positions for you. I know he's he played wide receiver primarily last year. He had rocket tailback. This year he's playing multiple positions. You kind of think that tailback spot may be more of a natural fit for him, don't you? Well, <laughs> I'll tell you what, I wouldn't trade him for anybody that I've seen this year. He can run the ball. He's just got a knack. Uh, he doesn't look like a speed demon back there, but he gets yards. He just gets yards. He can see a crease. He's got unbelievable vision. And then you put him out of receiver, and you know, mm -hmm. like I've We've said, that, like yeah. I've said a hundred times, I think he's the best in the state at receiver. Mm -hmm. So he is a uh, he's a weapon. I'm glad we got him on our side. We'll see more highlights coming up in just a moment. But as we go to break, let's listen in to the sounds of champions for the Oxford High School marching band and their homecoming performance last Friday night.
All right, second half highlights now here on the Jacket Corner. Oxford with a 14-7 halftime lead. And, Coach, you don't let them get back in this thing either. I tell you, I thought the offensive uh, side of the ball did a great job of coming out and setting the tone, running the ball. Great run by Gamble in that first play. There's uh, Siplin with a great run right there and protecting the ball. And, and the line came off the ball well. You can see we got a lot of pulls. And, and, and there's Gamble just weaving his way through there. He uh, doing a great job. And there's some good blocking going on. A lot of times, you know, people don't don't know, but when people run the ball in between the tackles, somebody's got to be getting blocked. So I was real proud of the offensive line. Here we are in a little jumbo formation and give it to Gamble, and he just kind of he just kind of falls in the end zone, which he just seems to do once he gets down there. And I, it's kind of fun to watch. It's not hard to call plays. You go hand him the ball when you get down there close. And defense, of course, you know we we played great defense all night long. I thought the linebackers got downhill. The D line played their butt off. There's Thomas Rudolph. That's what we've been missing in our previous games is interceptions. Now we moved him back to safety and he got two Friday night. Mm. That's a huge, that's a huge way uh, to help yourself in a football game is to intercept the football. It just takes momentum. Just take it kind of just takes their nerve. There's another good run, good blocking. Uh, here we go, shoot ourselves in the foot on this snap over the head. We lose about 20 yards. You know, and we we learned our lesson against Valley. You, you can't do that. You can't do it once and you can't do it four times. Uh, so we have got to get rid of that. But anyway, somehow, <laughs> get another great run and, and move the chains again. There's Weber right there keeping the ball. And right here, he, he's down. Then a guy pulls it out. Then they call a fumble uh, on film. It looks clearly like he's down. But, you know, maybe he just needs to hold it longer until he hands it to the ref. I don't know. There was a third down stop right there. Great job by the defense. I thought that play right there kind of sealed the game, stopping them on third and short. Great job by K.J. Adams. Uh, and all this you see right here is 21 to 7. Now we just got to protect the football and uh, run it when we can. Throw a little quick screen. There's Cookie. Uh, I thought he was going to get in. That guy got a hold of him. But here we go, getting a jumbo formation. And, and again, we'll just weave his way in there. Great job blocking right there on the back sideline, scooping those defensive linemen. You know, it's hard to make a tackle when you got a lineman at your feet. Uh, they do a good job right there popping the tight end. We kind of were soft right there, worried about the edges. But, uh, Anyway, right there we change the coverages and we cover him and we flush him out. That was the only bad thing. We do a good job covering. He scrambles, gets about 15 yards. He wasn't a bad quarterback. Here they go, running reverse. Uh, we lose we lose our leverage right there with Tommy Rudolph. He kind of lets the guy get outside. We got to turn that thing back into the other nine guys. Throw a little fade right here, and, and we look like uh, they dropped him out of a helicopter. Uh, you know, that's something we just got to improve on. And that, that's a tough that's tough to play, but. We got to do a better job of, of staying in phase with that receiver. They try an onside kick and Gamble recovers it. <laughs> funny, funny who recovered the onside kick, isn't it? <laughs> We've got him over there for a reason. Right now, 28-14, we just want to make sure we don't give them the ball back. And we said, hey, let's just throw a fade up and see if it works. Because they quit, we were running the ball so good, they quit double teaming him and they brought somebody back in the box. So, hey, why not go ahead and throw a jump ball to him? They get back down the field here late. We get a little pressure on them. They put the second string quarterback in there. Tommy Rudolph does a good job of intercepting. That seals the game right there. And, uh, you know, what, what a great night. And the best formation in football, the victory formation, seals the deal. Oxford knocks off Vestavia 35-14 to improve to 3-3 three and three on the season. And, uh, again, Coach, uh, this is an, an impressive win, as you'll see across the state. A great Vestavia team with a lot of tradition, 7-8 team coming into your place and you beating them at home. And, they, and they've got a good team. Uh, you know, we hit on all cylinders, but not take anything away from them. They've got a great team. They're still going to win games. You know, they beat Hewitt Trussell, who beat Gaston City mm -hmm. Friday night. Uh, they've got a good team. So I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of our boys because you're sitting there, you haven't, the ball hadn't really bounced your way a lot. Uh, and to come out there on homecoming and play the way they played in every phase of the game, offense, defense, special teams, I couldn't be prouder. Now it's time for our player awards for this past Friday night's game. And here we go. Coach, break them down for us. Well, to no surprise, Air Jacket Award goes to Trey Gamble. Also, the Racehorse Award goes to Trey Gamble. Most hits, K.J. Adams. Highest grade defense line, Jermaine Taylor. Jermaine's just playing. He's playing with a huge heart. I mean, he plays his butt off every game. Plays smart. Highest grade offensive line, Trevor Owens. Trevor's got a great attitude. Comes to work every day. Meanest jacket, Jermaine Taylor. Uh, just 
You know, I can't say enough about Jermaine. I can't say enough about how good of a kid he is either. Takeaway, Tommy Rudolph had two interceptions, made some good tackles. Game breaker, I think that's pretty evident right there, Trey Gamble. Hammer Ward, Jacob Shake, he had three big hits uh, Friday night, so real proud of Jacob. Special Teams Award, Keaton Bo Rally. Uh, he's just doing a great job kicking off and hitting extra points for us. You know, this is uh, some of the coaches have told me it's one of the first years in about five years that we've hit all extra points, you know, through midseason. Pride Award this week goes to Tommy Madden. Tommy, scout team tailback all week, and he had to run Vest Davies offense, so he ran the counter in the toss, sprint draw all week long, got hit by those starters on defense uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, never complained, got back in the huddle, ran the ball hard. So I'm very proud of Tommy Madden. I'm glad to say that he's a Pride Award winner this week. All right, congratulations to all the young men listed in the uh, individual player awards for the Vestavia Hills game. We come back, we'll have our player spotlight, and we'll talk about a return to region play, a big road trip to Benjamin Russell on tap this week as we continue right here in the Jacket Corner. Came off the bench for us last year, big tall girl, and she has worked real hard. I might need to stay up here in the box. You may have a couple people there. Really found, he gets in. Yeah. Touchdown, Yellow Jacket. Well, you know, one of the more versatile players on the Oxford team this season is Thomas Rudolph. He's played some running back, and now, as you saw on the highlights from last Friday night's game, he's playing some defense, and he's playing it very well. And he is the focus on this week's Player Spotlight. Senior Thomas Rudolph, a key member of the Oxford Yellow Jacket football team on both the offense and defensive sides of the ball. And he says it's been all about developing into a better football player his whole time here at Oxford. The whole time has been like a growing process from my freshman year to my senior year. I've grown a lot, you know, I matured a lot. I mean, working with my teammates, my coaches, it's, it just helped me build up to a stronger safety, you know, being able to work on my conditioning and help them on both sides are necessary. So, I mean, it's really just, like I said, been a growing process for me just the whole time I've been here. Tommy's a team leader, uh, played defense for me all game, uh, 11 games last year, 12 games last year, went over running back in the spring, uh, came back over playing safety for us, just an outstanding talent, can play on both sides of the football. Rudolph plays safety on defense and running back on offense. He had two interceptions against Vestavia Hills and has scored four touchdowns on offense, including an 85-yard kick return for a touchdown against Valley and he says that having to learn both offense and defensive plays is all mental. I mean, it's been a struggling process, but I mean, it comes down to just how bad you want to know it and, you know, how bad you want to help your team out. So, I mean, the whole time when I did struggle with it, I just figured out that it was just like mental stuff, just, you know, little small mistakes that I wasn't catching on to that now I look back on them like, wow, you know, saying I struggled with that and this and that. So it's just like a, you know, mind, you know, building thing. For the Jacket Corner, I'm Chase Robinson. Great uh, story there by Chase Robinson on Thomas Rudolph. You know, he's played running back. You saw what he did on Friday night on defense. You saw that clip from special teams in the Valley game. But I think the thing that impresses me most is when you, when you use a kid like that, move him around, he's got to have a little humility to him. Got to have a little bit of team first attitude. And I know that's probably one of the most, things you're most proud of with Thomas. I tell you, he does. He just wants us to win. We could put him at nose guard. We could put him at tight end, receiver, linebacker, wherever we put him. He's going to try to do everything he can to help us win. And, uh, and right now, he, he's our number one leader on defense. He's a verbal leader. He's a leader with his actions. Uh, and he, he tries to build everybody else up. So right now, I, I can't tell you how important he is to us and, and how much I appreciate him. And that's why I love athletics and sports in relations to life. Here's a kid who's doing it on the field in a team concept. He'll be a pretty good employee one day. <laughs> if I had, a, if I had a, a business, I would hire him right now. And you know he's one of those kids. He, he doesn't he doesn't have a lot, uh, but he makes more of what he has than people who do have a lot. You know, so I, I'm proud to know him. I'm proud. I'm 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 able to say I'm his coach. But uh, you know he's going to be a good citizen here in Oxford one day, and that's that's something that I'm I think really means a lot. All right, now time to look ahead to what's on tap this week. We start off with our region standings. Of course, uh, uh, not much change from uh, last week being a non-region game, but really, Coach, I know the only team that matters to you this week is uh, the, the team listed third there, Benjamin Russell. They're 5-1 and one overall. The only loss this season for them came to region leader right now, Opelika. They were shut out by Opelika 23 to nothing. They're 1-1 one one in the region which sets up this Friday night's matchup as you return to Region 3 play on the road at the Sportsplex uh, in Alexander City to take on a very good Benjamin Russell team coached by another one of those 
uh, long-standing legendary coaches in Danny Horn, who was at Clay County for so long and moved over to Ben Russell a few years ago. He's got his team playing very, very well. This will be a big challenge for you. It will be. He and, and on defense, he looks like he used to at Clay County. They're running a, uh, a 50 defense, and, and they run and they hit you. Uh, they've got a good defense line, good linebackers, good skill in the secondary. So it's going to be a challenge. And uh, on offense, they got a quarterback who really can run. You know, he kind of can improvise and make plays on passes, and they've got uh, stuff for him out of the option and, uh, where he, he just can make plays, and they've got big linemen. Both of their tackles are about 300, one of them's 6'5", one of them's 6'3". So they've got good size, they've got good skill, they've got a good team. So it's going to be a challenge, but I mean, I feel like, you know, especially after Friday night, mm -hmm. I think that that's no big deal. We've played Gaza City, we've played Opelika, we've played Bestavia. Uh, you know, we're, we're not going back down from anybody. And it's going, it'll be a great game. It'll be a tough game, I'm sure. But I look forward to going down there and, and let's see what happens. Well, you know, it, it's hard to read much into score comparisons. That's more for, I guess, fans and media than it is for you. But the one common opponent is Opelika. And uh, you scored more points against Opelika than they did. They, did. they were shut out, even though I think you said they had a couple of turnovers in that game. But... On paper, it looks to be a pretty even matchup. Talk about uh, keys to the game. I'm sure it starts with protecting the football and, and winning the turnover battle on the road. Yeah, of course. You know, you can't fumble it and you can't throw interceptions. But um, we've got to take care of their nose guard. They've got a nose guard who's real good. We've got to block him, keep him from being in the backfield and, and disrupting us. If we can kind of keep him in check, that'll give us a chance. Uh, defensively, we got to tackle. we got to tackle the running back. He can't run free. Uh, we just got to tackle. Uh, we can't get knocked off the ball. They got such a big line, and we've got to play low, uh, move things around. Don't make it easy on them. Uh, you know, if we can do that, if we can stop that quarterback, and if we can kind of control that nose guard, I think we got a good chance. Well, when we saw the new region alignment coming into this season, uh, I mentioned this a few weeks ago, the Opelika week. Opelika stood out because that's a team Oxford's never played. And to me, the next team that stood out in this new region was Benjamin Russell because there actually is some history between Oxford and Ben Russell. They have played. It's been a long time since they played. I think this is a neat series to kind of get back going Well, I, I, I would love to play them every year. I would love, if we're not in the region, for it to be a non-region game. Uh, it's, it's a good game. It's two city schools that... Uh, have a great tradition, I always play good football. So it's the type of game I like to play every year. It's about an hour and 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's not too far of a drive. It's better than going to Huntsville or Montgomery. Uh, you know, so it's a game I like to have on schedule every year. And it's going to be a tough physical game. So it's going to, you know, it's, it's going to make you better. Uh, you know, and it's it's the game we're playing this Friday, so it's important. And a great venue as well. It's a uh, it's unique place. They don't actually play on campus. It's called the Sportsplex, and it's more of a recreational area. I know you've been there before, but some Oxford fans, especially newer Oxford fans, may not have ever been down there. So it, it, it's if, if Oxford fans are going on this road trip, they'll enjoy this venue. It's probably one of the nicer high school stadiums in Alabama. The home side, I mean, it's a it's a double decker. It's you know, it's it's bigger than our stadium. Uh, uh, visitor side, you know, it, it won't wow you, but it's it's got plenty of seats. But the, but the home side, it's about as nice of a home side stadium as there is in Alabama. Now, Oxford fans, hope you're able to make the the uh, short road trip this Friday night and support the Yellow Jackets. Coach and I will be back with you again next week for all the highlights of big region matchup between Oxford and Ben Russell. See you next week.